Hi everybody, and welcome at last to a new Minecraft video. I know it's been like a crazy long time since you guys saw me. Too long, by far. Um, but I'm finally able to do this again. Fraps finally works with Minecraft on my new computer, and I can play it at full fog distance, and I can record in high quality, which means everything will not look like crap, which is absolutely awesome. So what I want to go over today is actually boosters. We've gone over these before in previous tutorials, actually several times. I've dealt with methods of using boosters, methods of using boosters to auto-launch your cart. Uh, we've observed using boosters to prolong the distance of a track, etc., etc. There are There is a new system, however, in uh, Beta 1.5 that's been implemented to attempt to remove the use of boosters uh, and make them obsolete. The change has not been fully made yet, not fully realized. Uh, boosters still function, as you can see, 1.5 underscore 01 up in the top there, and my booster is functioning just fine. However, Notch has introduced a system, or I believe Jeb introduced the system. Notch may have had a part in it, I'm not 100% sure. Either way, there are two new major pieces that we want to look at today. There's actually been a th going to be three things we look at, but two new major pieces of track we're going to look at. We're looking at the powered rail and the detector rail. We'll also be looking at redstone repeaters. To make a powered rail, you need gold, three pieces down each side, just like that. And then you will also need a stick in the middle and a piece of redstone in the bottom. That'll give you a powered rail, six of them for that uh, set of tools. For a detector rail, you will need iron down both sides, like a standard rail. But in the middle, instead of a stick, you use a pressure plate. And in the bottom middle, a piece of redstone. That'll also give you six detector rails. The other thing we'll be dealing with is the repeater, uh, redstone repeater. You need three pieces of solid stone along the bottom to build that. One redstone torch in the right and left, totaling two. And a piece of redstone in the center. And that will give you a redstone repeater. I've already got 64 of them, so I'm not going to bother adding any to my stack there. I've got lots. Just going to collect my materials back here. All right, so uh, the sun is going down, but you guys should be able to see now because of the high quality with my new computer. So we won't have any issues with nighttime anymore, which is going to be marvelous. The first thing I want to discuss is the powered cart track. There are two states for this cart track. There is powered and unpowered and we also will discuss the most efficient ways to power and unpower them. For now though, I'm just going to put a redstone torch beside it. You can see it lights up powered, and I'm going to place one over here that isn't powered. Just going to place it right here and drop a couple torches to make sure you guys have a nice clear view of what we're doing. Just like that, perfect. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to attach some track to each of these. Uh, there are actually some glitches in 1.5's track system, so you just got to kind of work around those. That's what I'm doing right there. That's why I had to destroy that piece and rebuild. I'm going to place a card up there, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to place a piece of dirt. Whoops, that is a torch, not dirt. Dirt is different than a torch. Wow, really? Twice? Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, place like this, like this, and like this. Now you might wonder why I'm doing this. The wonderful thing about the uh, powered cart track is that when it's powered, it will boost a cart that comes to it in the direction that it's already headed. So that one got a boost and went off. However, a cart coming to it, an unpowered piece, will be stopped in its place. I usually recommend having two of these if you're going to use them as a braking method, because if a cart is going pretty fast, it can sometimes slip over the first one. The second one's going to catch it for sure though. So if you're going to use it as a braking method, just be sure to have two of them. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and push that cart back up there. Now uh, you'll see that uh, these can receive power from any source like that. Uh, basically any way that anything normally can be powered will allow these to be powered. Uh, so unpowered is brakes, powered is gas. The thing is we want to, the ability to be able to power a stationary cart as well. That's very important, uh, especially to somebody like me. I build a lot of roller coasters. I have fun with that. The way we do this uh, is we just have the stationary cart would start here on this powered piece. Um, for now, I've got it unpowered. It will be powered. Place a block on one side, and then you also need to put three more. Whoops, I missed. Three more, just like this. I'm just going to place you guys a new torch so you can see clearly still. Three more, so you have a total of four in a row. The reason is that uh, unlike boosters, which in one to two squares will bring a cart up to f really chicken... 
In one to two squares, they'll bring a card up to full speed. You stupid chicken, get out. Get out. Out. Uh, in one to two squares, uh, booster system will bring a card up to its full speed capacity, which is well be beyond the uh, cart's speed limit of 8 meters per second. These guys here will never take a cart beyond the 8 meters per second, and so it will always be within the speed limit, and they also require four squares to bring a stationary cart from stop to a full 8 meters per second. It accelerates a little bit off of each square. And so having four of them is how we reach it. I'm assuming then by the math that it's probably like two meters per second boost uh, from a stationary cart for each one. A little bit less uh, because it's getting faster and it gets less boost as it's getting faster. The math is a little bit complicated. I don't do very well at math. Uh, so what's going to happen here is uh, if I power this one, the cool thing is that these will actually transfer power to each other as well. So they'll transfer for power to any touching squares as well. So when I power this, boom, whoosh, sends power just like that. The cool thing is that if I can use this to uh, extend power off uh, further. But the thing is that uh, if you want to use it to extend your cart's travel time, uh, the recommended distance is every 25 squares. Now the question becomes, how do I make it so when a cart is approaching, it's lit? Do I have to put a redstone torch at every one? The answer is no, you don't. I just got to unpower these because as you can see, it's bouncing off there. The answer is no, you don't need to put a redstone torch and manually power it. The way you do it is uh, after 25 squares, so I'm just going to place this a couple squares ahead. We're going to imagine that this is 25 standard rail blocks. Um, what you do is actually just place one of these guys. This is a detector rail. When a cart goes over a detector rail, with or without a passenger, it sends a redstone pulse out to every touching square. And underneath it as well, just like standard redstone uh, st or standard plates, so you can put redstone wiring underneath uh, if you wanted to run a line up to a further ahead power s power point. Uh, just place uh, one like this. When it hits that, it will turn this one on, and it's set to wait for the cart to cross it rather than turn off immediately when the cart is no longer touching this. So it will actually boost the cart straight across. It doesn't turn into a brake halfway over. Uh, and you only need one at this point because your cart already has momentum. So every 25 squares you would set up a system like that. If you want this to be two-way, right now this is one way. If a cart's coming this way, it will hit that and stop. If you wanted that to be two-way, simply all you'd have to do is like that, place a detector uh, piece on the other side. Then carts coming from any direction will receive a pulse burst. Uh, so that's basically how the uh, boosting and detector systems work. There's really not a whole lot else to tell you. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the end of it. So let's talk about these redstone repeaters. Most of you are probably familiar with these. They've been out since 1.4. They weren't added in 1.5 like these rail systems. So they're not news. But some people aren't yet familiar with them. How these work is, uh, firstly, they're actually temperamental to which way you place them. Whichever way you're facing when you place one, is its permanent facing direction. You can see an arrow in the details there. That's the permanent facing direction of this. So redstone needs to be entered in the back, not the side, entered into the back of this, and will exit the front. That's how it has to work. It's a very restrictive system for redstone, but that's the way it works, and it's much smaller than actually building a standard repeater. The way this works is these systems are set up to be actual repeaters or delays. I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to place one more of these. Whoops, as you can see, I placed that the wrong way. They're easy to break. I'm going to place one more of these. Now, the way these work is uh, with the first setting, uh, how they place default, they're simply extenders. They would extend the redstone the extra 15 squares. So once it's gone 15 squares and reached its limit, you place one of these, and it will extend it, just like building a standard repeater. What we can do, though, is if we right-click on these, it will change to position 2, and these each have four positions total. So we'll change both of those to position 2. I'm going to remove the torch, and when I place it, you'll notice that there will actually be a delay between when the first one lights up and when the second one lights up. Very short delay, but it's present. I'm going to go ahead and right-click those again, and they'll switch to position 3. This extends the delay, so now both of them have a delay. Boom, and you'll notice there's actually a delay before that redstone at the end lights up, even further beyond this delay, because this is adding a delay of so many ticks. So when I place it, there's actually three actions, light, light, light. Now, if I hit this again, same thing as before, it simply changes it to a longer delay. Boom, 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 
This allows you to delay systems if you want doors to open as you approach them rather than when you first hit the button or anything like that. You can change the delays separately. They don't need to be linked. You can use one as a relay and one as a delay switch. That's fine. That's how they work. They're very simple systems. They're very cool, very handy, and they're really easy to create. All you need is some solid stone, which you just need a furnace and some cobblestone to get. And if you don't have cobblestone, then you are doing something wrong in Minecraft because there is a ton of the stuff. That's pretty much it for today, guys. Uh, I've covered everything I wanted to show you guys. So you guys, uh, next time I do a video, it's going to be more about game survival and kind of more about the game itself. But until then, just have fun in Minecraft. Hey guys, so this little excerpt here is actually going to be recorded after the video that you just watched. I forgot to kind of, I wanted to go over the main pros and cons between the two different types of boosting, and I didn't really go over them. So just in this uh, little bit here, I just want to do a quick discussion here. I've only got a couple minutes. Um, basically the big disadvantage, let's discuss the standard booster system that most players use first. The main disadvantage here is pretty bloody obvious, it's size. This thing is huge. Even when you build a smaller one, uh, the more efficient ones, the more space economic ones, it takes up anywhere from 2 to 24 to 100 blocks, depending on how big of a system you're building, how powerful of a boost you want, and how reliable you want it to be, and how long you want to wait between boosts. So depending on the system that you're building, there can be a lot going on in a, in a space. The other thing that sucks about these, and animals here are proving it, they're really unreliable. They can be stopped by anything. Uh, they tend to stop on their own, and sometimes when you load a map, they don't start the way they should, and so you have to go through and reset a bunch of boosters yourself, and that just sucks. Now, um, with this, the other issue that I have is that uh, with these booster systems, you just run into too many unreliability problems. I find that sometimes you don't get boosted, sometimes you get stopped instead of boosted, boosted the wrong way, etc., etc. I love these systems, don't get me wrong, they've done me well for like the year that I've been playing Minecraft. These new systems, they have their disadvantages as well. Uh, let's discuss the main advantages of this system first. The big advantage of this system is that it's existed for a long time. It works well, and it can bring a cart in a matter of two to three blocks above the cart's speed of eight meters per second. Uh, so it actually brings a cart to an extremely high speed, allows it to travel for great distances. Now, with this guy here, the main cons are the fact that it doesn't bring a cart above 8 meters per second. It will only ever bring a cart to 8 meters per second. Uh, so that's a little bit of a disadvantage. It means your boost doesn't go as far, and you have to place one of these setups every roughly 25 blocks to get the maximum boosting capacity. That's not that bad. They're easy to add, they don't take up space, and they're not too difficult to get set up. So they're not that bad to have to put, but it does kind of suck that you have to be putting those every 25 squares. Really, that's the major disadvantage to these guys. The uh, main advantages are obviously the space that's saved and the fact that they're reliable. Uh, you'll always be able to get a boost unless there's an animal literally standing on your track. Um, so you're always going to be able to rely on a boost. And the cool thing is that you can effectively use these as braking systems if you uh, need to at any point. So if you want to bring a cart to a stop at any particular location, you're totally welcome and capable of doing that. So, um, between the two, I still say that it's personal choice. I still toss up between them. I'll probably use these systems more because I have a lot of gold kicking around in some of my worlds and I just need something to do with it. Uh, the two systems are both efficient. This is more reliable and so the system that I'll probably go with is this one. That system is cool and everything, it's just not reliable. That's about all I've got to say to you guys. Uh, sorry I had to put this on at the end of the video, um, but yeah. That's it.